Okay, today I've got this woofer, 10 inch woofer out of a Samic guitar amplifier. And this is the second one of these amplifiers I've had with a faulty woofer in it. They don't really have much on, on them in the way of marking, no brand, just this DY013 on the back. And it's completely open circuit. So I thought for something different I might cut the cone out of this and actually see if we can see why it's gone open circuit. Um, I've checked it back along these these flexible wires back to the where they go into the cone towards the voice coil and they're all right sometimes you'll get a break in these just from flexing around too much so it's possible that someone's actually cooked this one but I know another one it was just sent to the lady that bought it and it wasn't working when she got it so possibly there's something weak in these that vibration damages or something but I guess the first thing is to try and remove this dust cap care too much about that and that's that's where our voice coil is it's wound on the outside of this bit of I guess it's just a bit of plastic film type stuff and I guess we, in theory we could probably I can see something black in there in theory we could probably cut this out without even bothering to do much more it is joined I think also to this there's a kind of orangey yellow like a cloth was sort of soaked in almost like a cloth soaked in varnish or something but there's some sort of material in there that's that's like a suspension thing as well as the actual cone itself and the the foam although this isn't really very foamy around the other side it's quite stiff whatever it is again it's like cloth that's been soaked in epoxy or something fairly hard maybe not as hard as epoxy but it's certainly got something to keep it rigid on there now those two wires that come through the back come up to these little dobs of glue here. I don't know if we'll be able to see it very well, but they come to off, might be a little eyelet here, yeah, possibly a little eyelet thing there. And then it joins onto the very fine wires that go down to the voice coil. So it's still possible there's a break. I can actually peel that off here, surprisingly well. I can actually see the voice coil even with me pulling on this, it hasn't broken the voice coil wire, I don't think it's... That's the soldered end of that little wire, and there's a tiny... That's the wire on the outside that goes to the terminals, and there's a tiny little wire here, which is the voice coil. I'm surprised that didn't... the glue didn't actually tear that off. So we'll see if we can do the same on the other side. I'm probably pushing my... Ooh, pushing my luck a bit. It suddenly let go. Have I broken it? No, I think it's still actually, yeah, it's still soldered on there, amazing. But if you've got some sort of corrosion or something in there, I guess it could cause it to, to break there. Go open circuit there. Get the multimeter on continuity here. Definitely nothing there. These may be lacquer coated, so but they seem to be attached all right. So the, the open circuit's further in there somewhere. Let's see if we can peel that right off without ripping the wire. Often, if someone's really cooked it, you'll hear it crunching when you press up and down on it because it's actually burnt the wire or maybe melted it, melted the former that it's wrapped around this plastic thing. And you'll get crunching in the speaker. I think I just broke that. Or did I? No, it's still... Amazingly, it's still holding out. Oop, now I broke it off the other one, but it's still... Attached in the glue there, or is it? I broke it off at both ends now. I think it's in the glue still. What have we got here? There's a little blob of solder or something there. Can't see where the wire goes down, so maybe it shouldn't have been soldered again, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, I think I just broke it off now. Just we can see what... Oh yeah, there's the wire going down, so that must have been the bottom one. One had come out at the top here, and the other one would go right down to the other, because the coil's wound around this plastic thing from one end to the other. Actually, looks like it's only got a very short. That sort of dark band there is is it the only wiring in there. Maybe I guess it's got a pretty big magnet there, so probably all it needs. 
I expected it to go right around the former, but it doesn't seem to. We're probably going to rip that other connection off. Oh no, that's that one seems to go down low as well. That's tearing through the plastic. Oh, the, oh maybe there's two coils. I'm not sure what we've got here. Might actually have two separate coils even. I don't know what is going on there. But that goes down quite low as well. We could probably almost pull this back up through. Problem is we're going to do some damage to it. Maybe. So I think what I might do now. Is slice this off. Let's get it out a bit loose. And see so now we've got this. We need to cut through this. I guess I might as well cut these wires off too. And we need to cut this yellow stuff as well. And that's actually, because I've ripped it off, it's actually left the voice coil behind. Oh, there's the winding. It's right down in there. That does look a little cooked that wire mate, oh yeah it's cooked alright so this one didn't just go open circuit there's quite a bit of wire still in there because it's basically been fried right off the plastic but yeah that's very burnt that one you can see the whole bottom part of the wiring which I'm now pulling out of the magnet here has basically delaminated as such disconnected itself Though, it still doesn't explain our open circuit unless there's a break in this summer. This actually looks to be intact. And we can probably keep on winding. Ooh, yep. Yeah. So it looks like it might actually be a double layer of wires. Is that what's going on or is this one just feeding under it somewhere? So that's one wire coming in here, over the top. And going along, oh, what have we got here? Oh, here's the brake. I just found it. So what came off, or is that the other connection that I broke off? Oh, that is, that's actually, uh, that one used to go up to the outside, I think. I don't think this has actually got a break in it. I can understand if they're winding short together in this situation. But I cannot see an end on that. Where it's actually broken. If we rip that out of there. So that's one end of our coil. That's the good bit. And that's the other end, which still seems to be... Although I've got a problem now, because I've only got three... Oh, something's definitely broken here, because I've only got one end on that one now, so something did give way. I just can't see where. Hang on, I think I just saw it. There. Yeah, we've got a broken wire here. So hang on. We've got one winding coming in. Oh, actually that's... That's the other wire coming in there. So that used to be joined to this burnt bit wherever it was. That bit sticking out. And we've actually got the other wire that connected to the outside world here, I think. Oh, there it is. It's under this paper. Yeah, and that's up on the top of this former as well. So like I say, they're both up on the... Well, that's going one way, and that one's going the other way. So there must be like a double layer of wire here or something. That's the, yeah, that's the outer layer. I actually thought they just had one layer, but they must actually wind it, I guess, down and back over the top of itself, something like that. But yeah, that, that burn mark there is a definite giveaway. 
and possibly the wire came loose as you saw it was all stuck in the magnet and I guess even if it didn't bust immediately it would catch on the magnet with this moving around and and tear or just get metal fatigue or something I guess probably didn't last real long but yeah someone definitely fried this one so it's interesting to know so that's what happened to that speaker so basically got the cone with the outer foamy bit that often fails on speakers and then you got this lower bit just glued onto the bottom of the paper part and you have two flexible wires that go through and then they're soldered to the, the voice coil itself and other than that you've just got your magnet itself this one's been pushed in and then hit by like something like a big cold chisel I guess some machine would come down and stamp those little little post things that stuck out to cut into them and make that stay there and it's probably glued as well I guess it'd be interesting I can see some glues actually come out around it so you can remove these if you want to save the magnets but often you can prise them off the actual speaker the basket metal basket itself but then these bits will all be glued together really well and it often takes a fair bit of heat or something maybe a, a lot of force we could probably almost this one's actually got a hole through the magnet and it's got a bit of cloth stuff there I guess to stop creepy crawlies crawling in there and bits of dust and stuff so if we gave that bit there a really good whack you could probably almost get the get the magnet itself off probably need to do it on a vice or something but uh, if I can get my hammer back off it yeah, it's tearing off the actual basket before it's coming apart I can see there's plenty of epoxy type glue in there so I don't think that's going to come apart in a hurry but yeah it's a good strong magnet that's for sure so I don't think I'll bother salving that, salvaging that magnet it's much easier to get one out of an old magnetron out of microwave ovens probably not quite as big as these ones yeah, definitely not as big as these ones but a lot easier to get out because they don't have any uh, metal formers attached to them, glued to them. But anyway, that solves that mystery. I should have really pulled the other one apart to see if it had been cooked or not. But supposedly it worked before it went in transit and was sent to this lady. But yeah, this one's definitely been cooked. I'm surprised it wasn't scraping or doing anything weird given the amount of wire that was still sort of stuck around the magnet. Usually you just press on the coil and you can feel them crunching. That of course can be like iron filings or something in there though because of this yellow stuff and that usually the magnet's solid you can't really get iron filings in there they'll stick it to the dust cap or something but these are pretty well sealed up between the dust cap and that yellow bit to stop foreign objects getting in there but um, yeah someone's definitely cranked that one up gone hard on it so they're probably the other problem with these might be that they're underrated for the actual amplifier. I'm not sure how many watts these SAMIC things are. I guess I should look up the specs. But there's at least a 50 watt amplifier in there. I've just replaced this with an 80 watt Redback speaker. They basically fit straight in, thankfully, although they have a thicker rubber surround. And I didn't want to try messing with that. Sometimes you can peel these rubber surrounds off, but the problem is the voice, uh, the the paper cone is usually stuck down underneath it so sometimes since we can probably do with this one since we don't care sometimes these will come off quite easily and we'll leave that still attached nicely like in this case that's not going to come off it's well glued down that's the actual paper cone surround whereas this rubber is a separate part we need a bigger flat blade screwdriver Sometimes you can cut them down, but the other one I, I luckily had some screws of the same thread and just had to put some longer screws in because it's got like captive nut things built into the front of the cabinet. So with some longer screws that fitted all right, this red back one, the holes were slightly closer together. These are about 250 centers. They were a little bit less, 248 or seven or something, but managed to get it in all right. 
didn't bother doing a video on that since it's such a simple repair you just simply have you can hear the tweeter running no base and you simply put your multimeter across the terminals on continuity and find it open circuit very sort of common thing with speaker failures especially when they've been cooked like that but anyway thanks for watching